welcome. I'm going to talk to you a little about this issue of zero tolerance. We've, well, I've, I've flagged it up as something that I really want to do with regard to the campaign for police and crime commissioner. Uh, so if elected, I'm going to bring in this approach of targeted zero tolerance. Uh, that's a very different approach from the kind of policing we have in the United Kingdom at the moment. Um, and let's consider for a moment what targeted zero tolerance would actually mean uh, for the people of Devon and Cornwall and the Isles of Scillies. We'd change our present practice and gather, well, we'd gather statistics for police and crime, um, well, crime statistics uh, for Devon and Cornwall area by area. Uh, it possibly by postcode area, we would make decision as to how to do that or in, in con cooperation with the chief constable. We would then examine in particular the issue of violent crime, which is where we want to focus. And our focus within the issue of violent and antisocial behavior would be street crime. Um, that's the area we have to clean up. We have a major problem in, in Devon and Cornwall. And it's something that we really need to look at uh, if we're going to make it a better place to be. Um, we could do better. So how would we do this? We would select areas on a month-by-month -month basis in which crime of this type is at levels above the national average. And um, we'd, we'd select the worst area, if you like. In these areas, we would introduce on a rolling basis, a zero tolerance policing policy for comparatively short periods of time. Um, the uh, much maligned strategist and pragmatist Machiavelli, he used to advocate the use of, well, he had different motives, but nonetheless, he had used to advocate the use of harsh measures where necessary with as heavy a hand as possible, but only for a limited period of time. That is what zero tolerance policing in this context is um, on a mission to change the street culture that we sometimes have in at bad times in, in Devon and Cornwall. Now where this approach has been tried and tested in America it has resulted on occasion in a shift of antisocial behavior to adjoining districts. If that happens we will deal with it but we will find a way to be effective in this regard. In more practical terms, what we're talking about is the use of specific measures here, measures that would generate the apprehension of those engaged in antisocial behavior and either their subsequent arrest or their agreement to undertake some form of community payback. In practice, this means that someone either using drugs or consuming alcohol in the streets or evidently high on drugs and alcohol in such a manner as to be antisocial would be apprehended. If they were stoned or drunk, they would be placed in a wet room and charged a fee for the privilege. If they failed to pay the charge, they would be named and shamed. Uh, on, if, on, a, on a police website. If they were engaged in antisocial social behavior such as violence or intimidation, they would be offered an alternative to arrest in the form of community service. But that would be a formal agreement to community payback pre-charge. Failure to uh, pre so pre-charge, you understand that. Failure to deliver on their part would be the individual concerned would then be charged and go through the criminal justice system in the normal way. Um, I have discussed these measures in detail with the Devon and Cornwall Police Force and they are radical but they assure me that they are willing and able to do their best to implement them. They only ask that if set on this course, I do not change my mind so that they can then have a free hand to implement this policy without any attempt from me at micromanagement. I assure you that if elected, I shall not change my mind. This policy will be adopted and I shall not interfere with the work of the Chief Constable. He will have a free hand to implement it. And Devon and Cornwall will 
be a safer place to live as a consequence.